Blessing good morning to everyone. Shekinah, Vezia, located in the beautiful parish of St. Philip Church Village. I want to welcome you also on Facebook and goes on the internet to our Mother's Gear service. I want to wish all mothers this morning a blessed and wonderful and all that your heart desire Mother's Day in Jesus' name. Let us stand as we open up to the word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we, we pause to give you thanks for all this opportunity that you are granting unto us that we can come into your sanctuary to give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you, God, for life this morning, the breath that is so precious than anything in this world. And Father, I want to give you thanks, dear God, for all that you have done for us through the past week and bring us to another new mind day in Jesus' name. And as we come into your presence, I pray that we will come to the heart of thanksgiving. We will come with a dance, we will come with a shout of hallelujah, we will come with praise and glory unto your name because you are worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the sea. Your name is worthy to be praised. And Father, we bless you with a high note of praise. We give you thanks, dear God, for each and every one of us here in the sanctuary, especially the mothers here this morning. I pray, Lord, that you will bless them with the blessing that they give rich and I give no sorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, dear God, that you will continue, dear God, to use us mightily. Let your Holy Spirit direct everything that will be said and done here in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, dear God, that you be obedient to the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. I pray, dear God, for your word. I pray, dear God, that you will come, dear God, and do what is you have call it to do in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, dear God, that you will anoint the pastor, O oh God, with a fresh anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Anoint the worship team. Anoint each and every one of us, the musicians, dear God, that they will play, dear God, like never before. In the name of Jesus Christ, and I pray to God that as we worship you, Lord, we will give you all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory because you are worthy, dear God. I pray to God that you will help us not to care about none of our praise, but give you a hundred percent of our praise unto you in Jesus' name. Everything we place into your hands this morning, and I pray to God that. Everything will run smoothly in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Lord. I'd like to draw your attention to the scripture lesson. This is found in Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, reading from verse 10. I will read it from the Amplified Version, which is give us a, a more clear explanation of the Word of God. And it reads from verse 10 to 31. An excellent woman, one who is spiritually capable, intelligent, and virtuous, who is he who can find her? Her value is more precious than jewels, and her worth is far above rubies or pearls. The heart of her husband trusted in her with secure confidence, and he will have no lack of gain. She comforts, encourages, and does 
and only good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with willing hands in delight. She is like the merchant ship abounding with treasure. She brings her household food from afar, from far away. She rises away also while it is still night and gives food to her household and a son's task to her maids. She considers a field before she buys or accepts it, expanding her bigness prudently with her profits. She plant fruitful vines in her vineyard. She equips herself with strength, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness for her God-given tasks and makes her arms strong. She sees that her game is good. Her lamp does not go out but is burned continually throughout, throughout the night. She is prepared for whatever lies ahead. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle, as she spins the wool in her thread for clothing. She opens and extends her hand to the poor, and she reaches out her filled hands to the needy. She does not fear the snow for her household, for all in her household are clothed in expensive garlic wool. She made herself coverlet, curtains, and rugs of table tree. Her clothing is linen, pearl, and fine, and purple wood. Her husband is known in the city's gates. When he sits among the elders of the land, she makes fine linen garments and sells them and supplies are ashes to the merchants. Strength and guilty and her clothing and her position is strong and secure. And she smiles at the future knowing that she and her family are prepared. She opens her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom, and the teaching of our kindness is on her tongue, giving counsel and instructions. She looks well to know how things go in her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children will rise up and call her blessed. Blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired. Her husband also, and he is praised her sin. Many daughters have done noble and well with the strength of character that is steadfast in goodness. But you excel them all. Charm and grace are deceptive and superficial, beauty in vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, reverently worshiping, or being, serving, and trusting Him with all full respect, she shall be praised. Give her 
of the power of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. This is the reading of the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank God for the ladies in the house. You look so lovely this morning. All the ladies. Give the ladies a hand. All the ladies, the mothers and the mother fellows. So God, many of us go on, may not may not have bear a child, but you are mother fellows in many children's life, even especially teachers. You always have something good to say to the children. You know, encouraging them. You know, and cause them to excel in whatever their endeavor. Praise God. Hallelujah. You want to invite the worship team led by Sister Scrubs back by Brother Ecosta Yana and Brother. Stephen Clark. <laughs> so good the word. See him just freeze. But it's happening. <laughs> oh, welcome to my sister. Bless Amen. the Lord. Bless the Hallelujah. Lord. It happens. But we give God thanks nevertheless. We're grateful for life. I mean, there's life. Anything can happen. So we just want to give God all the thanks. And all the praise this morning as we remember mothers in a special way today. There's one thing we all can say that if not for God's grace, we don't know where we would be. We're so grateful for the grace of God. Then hope might have, you know, all hope might have seen lost to us. God's grace came through. So we wanted to start off by singing that song, Amazing Grace. Hallelujah.
not for his mercy, where would we be? His mercy is something to give God thanks for. When we didn't know, he came in and he rescued us on so many occasions. Mothers, I know you can testify about the mercies of God. And we want to continue giving him praise this morning. We can declare that he alone is the most high God. All other gods, they are made with the works of men's hands. But we serve the God who is true and who is alive and who will be alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Bless his name.
of wrong. We can't look back and see that thing was meant for my destruction. But praise God, God gave me the victory over the thing that he thought would have caused me to fall and never arise again. We can't reflect on the goodness of God in this land of the living. The many things that God has done for us. God knows what is in our hearts, ladies. God knows what is in your heart. I was reminded of the story of Hannah when she went up to the temple to pray. Her husband knew, but he could not console her. He thought if he gave her enough, it would satisfy. But God knew what was in her heart. And though she appeared drunk, God was able to see beyond. And she received the answer. You know, the other lady who had children from her husband was giving her terror, taunting her. It was a lot of evil coming towards her. You can't get the children you're burying. I'm the one who has them. But God heard the cry of her heart, mothers, women, men, in the name of Jesus. God hears the cry of our hearts. Before we even say a word, before we say a word, God hears your heart's cry. Every unspoken word, every tear has a meaning. He hears it all, women. He sees it. And he cares. And so sometimes life might be so burdensome. And everything seems so heavy. God has given us a mouth. And he says, You can speak life. You can speak life to your situation. You can't speak it. So sometimes I know it's hard to take your eyes off of the problem. Sometimes it seems like so much. I've been there. I have I am there many times more than I might want to be. But I was challenged one morning on my way to school. I just felt real heavy. Heavy, heavy. And I couldn't understand. I work at school. <laughs> and I couldn't understand why. But you know, the mind came to me, God was saying, look, pray. And when I started to pray, that spirit of heaviness lifted off of me. The victory sometimes is in our mouths. Hey, hallelujah. We don't always have to carry it. Better we let it out with a tear, with a cry, with a song. God knows, he sees, and he cares, ladies. So anything that the enemy means for evil for you today, we declare that God will turn it around for our good. We make that declaration this morning.
God of us off the way maker, just the chorus, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. We will drop the spirit of heaviness and replace it with the spirit of joy. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we're going to let go of the heaviness and we're going to receive the strength of God.
days we cannot see. In the old days, the appendix, he moved so wondrously as though there were no God. God is very present and God is very real. And so this morning, we took a little time to give him some praise and some thanks. Because had it not been for God who was on our side, had it not been for God who was on your side, I got to make it personal. Had it not been for God who was on my side, so this morning we are not afraid to praise Him or ashamed to praise Him. We thank God for His infinite goodness. He is so good. We cannot measure his goodness. But the writer reminds us that morning by morning, new mercies, new mercies. So whatever I did yesterday, that's gone. Whatever I'm going to do today is mercy. God is good. On this Mother's Day, I greet you. Tell somebody God is good to you. Good to you. Good to you. God is good to you. We ought to just give him the thanks and the praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 One of the use of our time we have for many, we want to look to the word of God this morning. And the worship team. We want to welcome all of you, the, the, the mothers. You, but the boy said already he got the first compliment in. You look so lovely. And we thank God for you, mothers. And of course, we, all the ladies in the house. And Mothers, potential mothers, those who mother biologically, those who by need of support, mother others. Special welcome to the men here supporting. Amen. And call for the men. And of course, those who are visiting this morning, we have our members, we have our friends, those who are regular, irregular here. But there may be somebody who's here for the very first time. If you are here for the very first time, can you just wave your hand so we can anybody here for the very, very first time. So very Oh we have oh, we have one we have one person. That's God for you. Welcome to Shekinah. It's your first and your last time as a visitor. When you come back next time, you, you, you'll be able to frame it. So welcome to Shekinah. This morning I'm going to look to the book of Exodus chapter 2. On this Mother's Day, we give God thanks for the wonderful, I don't know what word to use here, but I, I know that when God fashioned the, the universe and the Created this, all these celestial bodies, this sun, and moon, the stars, and all these things. Created all the things from the earth. Every creature has its own kind, and every plant, and every herb, all the flora and fauna. Many made it upon the beast exceeding man. And the angels probably went, Whoa, look at him. But then, at the end of every day, God was going, It is good, it is good, it is good. God was on a roll. It is good, it is good. But then one day he looked at man, and as he looked at man, he had to confess. Despite the sun, the moon, the stars, and all the heavenly bodies, and all the flora and fauna, even man himself, he had to confess it is not good for man to be alone. So he had to create the crowning of it all, the woman, 
Let me give God thanks for living me this morning. I come down. I don't know where we went to. We know where. So we give God thanks for the women and the purpose, the powerful purpose that you play in the plan of God. I want to say to you, women, don't underestimate the call that God has placed on your life as a mother, whether biological or otherwise. Amen. All right. So let's, let's set the tone. Exodus chapter 2, verse 1. I'm going to read to verse 10. I'm going to move swiftly. It says, And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman, this mystery woman, we have no name, conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wait what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh, that's the king of Egypt, came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away, and nurse it for me. And I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew. And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. Father, may your word be a blessing and a challenge to us all even on this Mother's Day. We ask for your divine voice to speak to us in a way that we each can understand. And at the end of it all, we will all grow closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This morning I want to issue a challenge. And although I'm speaking to the mothers directly, I want to speak to all of us indirectly. The challenge this morning is mothers don't quit. Mothers don't quit. Our text speaks about a, a mother and in the text she is nameless but when we reference Numbers 26 and 59 it reads, Amran's wife was Jochebed, daughter of Levi, who was born to Levi in Egypt, and she bare Amran, Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam, their sister. So the lady we're speaking about this morning is a lady by the name of Jochebed. And I want to use this scripture to offer some perspectives on motherhood. To us. The first thing that jumped out to me when I <clears throat> read the text was the fact that it says, when she saw that he was a goodly child. And it may seem insanely obvious, but for every mother, I've never heard of a mother that give birth to a child and say, For every mother, it seems as though that child is a, a precious child. But when she saw, and the first thing I want to say to us mothers, and this morning, 
forgive me, I'm gonna make the main honorary mothers this morning. Can we afford to that privilege? The, the men can be honorary mothers um, in the building. So you don't feel left out. But mothers must have vision. Mothers need to be able to see something. Proverbs 29 and 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And vision in this context speaks up to redemptive revelation of God. In other words, redemption speaks to bringing back or buying back. And so a vision from God speaks to a, a circumstance where when you look at the situation, it is a lost situation, it is a gone situation, it is not worth the effort, it is a waste of time. You could have put your effort into something else. How many mothers feel that way sometimes about the way their children are going sometimes? Or have gone? As hard as it says it is. But the Bible speaks to a vision, a redemptive revelation. In other words, God gets, in, God gets into your business and God shows you that your situation is not impossible for him. God knows where you're at. And that vision from God, that word from God, that revelation as we may call it, it speaks to you and says to you, despite how things may seem in your life, don't buy into what you are seeing Trust me. It is the same God that formed the entire universe out of nothing. And so whenever God puts in a word to our lives, it is a challenge to trust him. When he spoke to Mary and he said that Mary, you're going to give birth to a child. Mary had one question. How can this thing be? I never, I behave myself. And the word to Mary was, the, the, the most high, the power of the most high shall overshadow you. If you are in a position where God can work, things can work out. So here is a woman in a situation where you consider the context. She is living in a serious time when you read the, if you know the story of Moses. Joseph, his brother had betrayed him, sold him, but to summarize it, what they meant for evil, God turned it around for good. You gotta thank Moses and Joseph for those words for that song. Joseph had a copyright, but he ain't getting the royalties from it. He got an eternal royalties. But God turned the situation around where he became the prince of Egypt, the prime minister of Egypt, and he brought his family down. And they multiplied and they grew to be a large force. But then a time came when that Pharaoh, who had so willingly embraced them, passed away. And a new Pharaoh arose who did not know about Joseph. And when he looked around and he saw how these Israelites were prospering, he began to get a little nervous. Because he said, suppose they raise up against us and join our enemies. They will overthrow us. So he came up with a plan. His plan was, let us kill all the boys, the baby boys. Kill all the baby boys and that was the law. But there was a mother who, when she looked at her child, recognized that God has blessed me with a goodly child. Friends, whatever God has blessed you with is a good thing. Whatever God has blessed you with is good. And so, despite the decree that went out, this woman recognized that she had a court of appeal that she could come before. And so she decided she was going to trust God in the midst of the situation. You know how many realize how powerful rulers are? 
it is one thing to say that the fairer, and in those days there were no, no human rights, you could come and appeal to the, to the, the, the what do you put the point on any name? The Privy Council. When the fairest thing cut off your head, when the butler and the baker were in prison and Joseph gave the interpretation, but the boy, you get the baker, head off. So when a ruler gives a decree, we can talk all we want, but when a ruler gives a decree, it's a serious thing. And I realize that during 2020, 2021, and when that COVID thing was running around the place. And the Prime Minister, through the Attorney General, decided not a man leave your house. And all the big talk you got. I used to watch as a youngster, which called Allo Allo. When you get Gastapo and all these things. And it's the one who myself, oh, you can get yourself locked up in a house so I can't go on the streets after six o'clock. What kind of madness that is, though? Who will live in a country like that? And lo and behold, when the Prime Minister after this thing, get in your house, get off the road, check me. Up, say, Philip. I have a Facebook. Turn in the corners, in the house. Because nobody is seeing me on the paper. Charged. But this woman decided she was going to, despite how dark the days were, she was going to trust. She was going to trust God. Despite the threats of fear and the horrors of the time, this woman had the godly insight to see that this child's life was a non-negotiable. There are some things in your life, believers, that you have to make a non-negotiable. Don't compromise with them. The first thing that we must see as a non-negotiable is our walk with God. You cannot compromise your walk with God. Whatever God says to do is not only when you want water turned to wine. If you want to live a Christian life, whatever God says to you, you have to do it. For the word of God says, two cannot walk except they agree. So a lot of people want God to help them, they go through the struggles and they want God to be with them. But listen, you got to make up your mind, you want to follow what God says. This mother saw that her son was a goodly child and he had a special purpose. Well, we know the purpose now. God was raising up this child, Moses, to bring his children of Israel out of this land of bondage and bring them into their own promised land. They had a special, he had a special purpose. And isn't it wonderful to know that many of us are here today because somehow your mother says that you had special purpose despite the challenges that you presented. A lot of us this morning, if our mothers have considered the challenges that we would present and the complications in their lives, they would have done away with us. Pregnancy isn't easy. Some of you may have it rough. I was speaking to a, a, a lady who was pregnant recently. And she said to me, she said, I live in the mirror this morning and my nose can cover my whole face. She said, I'm recognizing myself. So she had a book. Um, I was doing fix off, so I'm going to see if you can get it coming up. God, they're just taking over your whole face. But it's not easy to have your body stretching and the, the pains and the, and the hormonal thing and the smells and it, it, it's, a, it's a rough thing for some. And then there's the risk of death sometimes. Whenever you're giving birth, and even after you give birth, you the postpartum. Everybody say, "Oh, you're so cute." You're like, They're just dropping by for five minutes and the child quack. <laughs> and then, I went, 
all this morning, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. <laughs> and, and they don't say it, they just, you're so blessed, you're so blessed. And you think I'm so stressed. <laughs> but so many mothers are becoming so concerned about motherhood. It seems though motherhood is becoming more and more an endangered an endangered position. I did some research, a little short research, and I'm told that in the 1950s, the average Barbadian family had about five children. 4.5, they say, you know, they're off the fight. Average family, the average didn't work. The family an average them. Of course, some had 13, some had two. But the average family had like 4.5 children. I'm told today the average is 1.6. 1. 1. So I want them a good piece. <laughs> and so, whereas before you could get a 55 and retire and 60 and retire, now they're telling you 70 is looking more reasonable. You know, and you're going to get a little less money because y'all ain't having no more children. <laughs> But we're told in the text this morning, 1.6. I had a close friend when I was growing up, his mother had about 11. And every now and again, I test my brother Alzheimer's or dementia, anything to play with me. I try to call all the names in my head. I think call all 11 is everything. But that was a lot. But back then, it seemed as though. Mothering, motherhood was something, a joy, despite all that was going on. And in Egypt, we are told that the, the children of Israel continued to increase and increase. And we are told, in fact, that the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. So the more pressure they put them under, the more the children of Israel seem to prosper. Look, sometimes when things get hard for us, our first thought is to quit. We don't even give God a chance sometimes to work. But listen, I want to challenge you mothers this morning. No matter how dark and difficult things get, trust God. Trust God. Jochebed refused to surrender her child because she understood that this was a goodly child. This was a child of value. God has given me something of value. Listen, motherhood may not pay you like being the CEO of Flo or Massey or one of these big organizations. You may not get returns from it after six months like boss bonds. But can I tell you, there's no job that can replace mothers. There is no job. And you may not get the kind of reward that you think you should get. But I believe that if you are faithful, God will reward you. You know, there are some mothers that do the best for their children, and the children turn out to be so ungrateful. They behave as if they made themselves what they were. But I know that for sure. A lot of us are where we are. All of us. Because of the sacrifice of parents, and that includes the mother. Amen. So mothers, you must see the true value in the child you've been given. And whether that child is two, and you can imagine it to be anything, and you say, hey, look at it, look at it, give me a lawyer, you know, you always need to argue you have to. Every time I tell us, I mean, if you give me a lawyer. But now they are 32, and they do it a team. And you have all about giving up. And in your heart, you feel as if, like, what you can be, I want to say Mother's Day is not over. There's still value in that child. He may have gone or followed the law. 
Maybe like a friend of mine that said to me, I have to take my son to harm with a other Ranavada. And he was serious. Every time he said, every time my dad, every time my son called me, he said, Dad, she said, she's on the point. I got another one here. But I'm saying that sometimes, man, they're young and they're cute. We, we, we can invest. But sometimes we get to the point and say, I wash my hand in you. I wash my hand in my hand in you. So then, who is going to have a heart to see any value in that child that God has given you? They may say, I'm a man when they turn 18 or whatever. But it's still your child. Huh? Amen. So mothers, you must see. Secondly, mothers, you must have a strategy. What do I need to do to give this child what it needs? No, they've always had amazing mothers. When you look at our society, even Barbados, how many households are there? You know, I, I teach as well. And I can tell you that in any class that you have, if you have 30 children in a class, if you have five that live with their mother and father, you have a good number. But that's just the reality of our society. So how many households are carried by a single mother? And our history is, is so rich, we may suddenly look back on it and say, you know, we had it so rough, we had it so hard, but listen, I don't think our gener the, the young generation now will ever appreciate the goodness of God the way those who are over a certain age, if I remember, will appreciate it. Because if you've lived in a time, most children come along in a time now where you come along, you have a, a nice house, you have internet, you got TV, you got a fridge. You got all these things, you're born with them. You just believe that God created them. But if you've been around for a while and you came along where your mother or whoever, whoever was raising you had a little chapel house that had a little toilet outside in the backyard. I remember, I used to love to go with my grandmother, man. Because I, I was fascinated with the, with the big toilet outside. And because I don't even want to see darkness. I used to wonder what was, what was, what was down in there. It, it, was, it, was, it was fascinating. You know, to go. Go to the end over here. But I tell you, it, it's amazing how we're going to hear the stories. Of, I didn't know for those persons who experienced it, it, it wasn't joy getting up. At early morning to go and get water and stand pipe and all these things that you know what you didn't have any toys. I remember as a youngster when my grandmother, I mean Uncle Irvin and all of us used to play Yemi and Pama. Well uh, Pama was the greatest thing under the, under the sun. You would hide, you would hide and you would count and you won't hide and you had a you had like a warm spot, you had to run and hide. And when the person walked around, you would try to get back to the spot and touch it. And that thing was so much fun. Let me tell my son, come on, be a papa. He walked all over at the app store or the Samsung or the Apple store. That's the only papa they wore. But to see how God has given mothers the grace, even when they didn't have the resources, look, I find it amazing to see how many mothers were able to, to turn up little child host into the add-on wall toilet and then over a period of time transform it you gotta ask yourself what they used to eat and so I always challenge myself that we as black people right we as black people sorry for but we as black people God understand that there is something God has blessed us with. It is models and examples. Look, I have one of my emails as 
Irma, grandson. That's my grandmother and my mother said. Because when I saw the diligence of this woman, how hard she worked, the industry she was in, not the proverbs, woman there, man. in living color. A woman with a spirit to work and to achieve things. I tell myself I can't afford to be lazy. There's something in me that can't quit. And I believe each of you as women, you've got somebody in your lineage that speaks to a, a mental toughness that despite the odds will not just sit down and roll over and think I can't make it in life. There's some model that you need to reflect on as a child. Even as a child, I look back and say, look, I saw my grandmother, how my mother, so many of us, so many of us, but yet was able to ensure that we got some bit to get to school, to get a chance at an education, to get a chance to become somebody, to do something. I know because we got it a little tough, we be saying we can't make it like so hard. You really want something to make them. I do a book and say, you really want something to cry about. You walk. But the truth is, some of us really want something to cry about. Because every little challenge we got, every little thing we said, you know, ball and ball and ball and ball. If your grandmother could sit you down and tell your child, it's a dying man to pray about. And if you heard her story and what she went through, you would just want to wet your tears. Get ready to knock. Get up and start walking forward. Amen. Mothers have found a way, a strategy. They didn't go off to high school or university and study to strategic management. They didn't went, they, they went nowhere. They did not structure. But by God's grace, even if they didn't go to church, they would say, God help me. And God, for his faithfulness, would give them up something to get through. Yeah. Will it be easy? No. But mothers, you gotta find a way. You gotta get us, you gotta get a strategy. You gotta get a strategy. God is able to give you the strategy to get it done. You know, Jacob had believed that God had given her a child for a special purpose. And so she built a vessel. She lined it with pitch, such way. Like. And she positioned Moses in a strategic place. You got it. You can't allow frustration, mothers, to overwhelm you. Yes, the frustration can be real. A lady called me something recently and she was talking about the body. Child father. I, I, I don't know his name. All I know is the child father. And she kind of going to embarrass the child father at the workplace for child support. It's on mothers. You gotta trust. You gotta trust God. It can be overwhelming, but you gotta trust God. I mean your hormones and everything. Then if you powerful, you gotta trust God's wisdom and God's guidance. Amen. Trust God's wisdom and trust God's guidance. So mothers must see. You gotta see something. You gotta be something. You gotta see yourself in the role that God has assigned for you in this child's life. You gotta get a strategy. Let God show you what you have to do. Don't let the frustration overwhelm you. All this woman saw that God wanted her to do was to build this little thing for this child and put this child in it, make sure it don't leak, and put him on the water and step back. Mothers, when you've done what you need to do, learn to step back and let God. Learn to step back and let God. She recognized that she was limited. And so she didn't clutch him in her arms and cry. She 
released him. Sometimes they say that men can be emotional. Men can be doing. But it's not easy for a woman to understand to let go sometimes. And she had to let him go. Because she recognized her limit. She recognized that thirdly, mother, a mother needs support. The word says in Exodus 2 3, she saw it was a little child. But verse 3 says, And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dubbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wait or to see what would, be, would be, uh, become of him. Mothers need support. Here it is the mother of Moses, Jochebed. She placed, she called upon her daughter or the sister of Moses, Miriam, and she positioned, she gave her a role to play, although she was the mother. I'm saying, mothers, you don't have to do everything. You don't have to do everything. Moses was blessed with a sister. And I want to say to you ladies, if I can say, if I need to say it louder, I say it louder, softer, I say it softer, but I won't even get it. I want to say to you ladies, especially those of you who are members of Shekinah, those who are friends of Shekinah, you are blessed to have wonderful sisters in the Lord. Is it here some more than is here? But tell the, tell the lady next to you, I thank God for you. And if the lady is not a friend of yours yet, make it a point to get to know them. And the one behind you and the one in front too. Jacobin recognized that this sister had value. That God had given position of this sister to be of service. And so I want to say to you mothers that there are other sisters that God has placed in your life that can support you. Sometimes being a mother can be can be can be hard. It can be hard. But God allowed Jacob to realize that Miriam, the sister of Moses, could give critical support to help her in the strategy. You see, she had the strategy. But having an idea is not enough. How do you get this idea to actually work? And so she left Miriam there to stand a watch. I want to speak to the Miriams now. So the times when you will be the Jacobite, you're the one, the mother. But there's the times you're going to have to take on the role of Miriam. We're really going to have to see a, a, a mother in need of your support and give the support. She was given a role to stand a watch. You know, it was Cain who said concerning his brother Abel, am I my brother's keeper? I want to say to you sisters that your sister is your sister and you ought to have a care and a concern for your sisters. And I say that church can only be a kind of experience for you that it needs to be if you learn to connect with sisters and brothers but this morning because of the honorary sisters and your sisters in the Lord. Miriam stood her watch and she intervened to speak to Pharaoh's daughter on behalf of Jacob. I'm saying sometimes there are situations that will arise, ladies, when you've got to begin to intervene on behalf of a sister in prayer. Sometimes when you see a sister struggling, when you see a sister stuck, you got to get, not before Pharaoh, but before God, and intervene. She went to Pharaoh's daughter, and she said, do you want me to go and fetch a nurse for you?
But the second thing I know about support is that God used another woman to share in the mothering of Moses. Because it says that when she came down with, the daughter of Pharaoh came down, and she saw the ark, she sent the maid to fetch it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe went, and she had compassion on him. Listen, there is a grace on a child's life that will allow another woman to love that child as if she had birthed that child. I'm telling you. I'm telling you from experience. Look, I wasn't the prettiest child. I wasn't get pretty. <laughs> the age. But I had a, well, she was really a cousin. This is called her auntie. That woman, God rest her soul. Listen, that woman loved me if she, she had given birth to me. I mean, like anything, if that woman, whenever she get any money, and when she say, David, come, follow me, my little later, boy, no money. <laughs> she will hold my hand and she will put the paper in my hand. Right, I'm squeezing it. Yep. I much, but come this way. Because she saw something of potential that wanted, she that one time she, she called me and she said, I can't talk hard because I get something. And she gave me $500. And I invest that money, I wanted a computer. That was back in the 80s. And then I think computers first come up. I was on the cutting age. I, I was the first. Well, I was one of the first ones in Barbados to get a whole level of computer study because she gave me a she gave me the money to buy a computer. And even when the syllabus had no starting to take two years, they did it in one in two in two terms and passed it. Because she she invested in me. I wasn't her child. But listen, there's nothing that she had that she would not give me. And so I want to say to you mothers that you may have a child. And yes, you, do, you give birth to that child and it's your child. But I tell you, God has such a grace. The Spirit of God is able to grant such a grace to some other woman who, who will just love your child. And don't get jealous. Really, really jealous. I can go by auntie. You see? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 you let the grace, you get let the grace flow. Because when this woman saw Moses and she heard that cry, her heart just opened up. And although she knew it was a child of a Hebrew that should have been destroyed, somehow because of the grace of God touched her heart, she said, This is my child. This is my child. Listen, you don't have to be. The birth mother that child. If God, if you read it out loud, I just got to think about this child. Love the child. Love the child. There's a grace on another woman to love that child as if she had given birth to it. And as far as she's concerned, that is my child. The worst thing that she took was that she raised him as her own. Jacobin had a certain time to instill, to pour into Moses all that she could pour into him. And then she had to release him. I want to say to mothers, pour into your child. Amen. Pour in. Mothers today have a lot to pour in. Fathers have a lot to pour into. You know, I was reflecting as I was preparing. And I remember I was, I was sitting now with an old mother in the church. A sweet, sweet woman. Sweet, sweet, sweet woman. She's lovely. I am calling her name. Sweet, sweet woman. But I was sitting, sitting with her and her daughter. And we were reflecting. And... She said, the mother said, you know, 
The only thing I regret now is that my, I used to beat that man. And the daughter said, beat. She said, when she said beat, let me tell you what she mean. She mean a dog hunter. No, no, a dog hunter. And she said she did, she just killed with it too. I mean, and listen, the woman, the, the children were like, because as she reflected, she was saying, you know, back then. And you know, I feel like this, this saying is a Bayesian corporate thing. You know, they said licks. Licks like peas and rice. Licks like peas. Now, it's a stable man. Licks. So, every child knew he or she was loved. Because your mother would be here, your father would be here. That was the, you know, this, this book's not about love languages. We got these fancy love languages now, so I read this book, love language, my wife wanted his time, you know, communication, some of them like gifts, some people want help, you know. This is for Brother Kevin, you know. Uh, love, love languages, you know. But let me tell you about that love language is one thing. Let's mind. Because the idea is, you got to know I love you. Because if I didn't love you, I didn't even beat you. Because you get clothes, you get shoes, you get what you want, you get, so that, that is. And you know, that really was the time. That really was the time. So, we got to appreciate that people, our mothers, parents, did the best they could based on what they know or what they knew. Amen. So pour in. Pour in. Moses went on to be the man of God who would bring Israel in, well, out of the land of bondage and set them on course for the promised land. Mother, I want to say as I close this morning, see value in your assignment. As a mother, there is, God has given you a tremendous responsibility. Don't undervalue it. Ask God for the strategy. When you feel it's all you're stuck, what do you do with this child? Can you kill it? No. Ask God. God will give you the strategy. What do I need to do? And thirdly, Get the support. See the sisters and other person that God has placed around to support you. They are there. Amen? They are there. There's a special grace I believe that God has poured out to help mothers this morning to be successful. Amen. And there's an old saying, Yes, a village to, to raise a child. I believe that's, that's still so. You don't practice it, but I believe that. There's a grace that whoever we come across, we especially as believers, can pour into the lives of other. Whether you've got, if you've got 1.6 children or 4.6 or 11, I believe that the days are not necessarily gone because they know that there are many who have to fix 11 plates but still could find an extra to fill up a 12th to help somebody. So let's be open to support one another. Mothers are wonderful people. God has blessed you to be wonderful people. And we give God thanks for you this morning. Let's pray this morning as we So Father, we want to thank you for the mothers. Remember those in particular who are going through dark and difficult circumstances like Jacobi. We pray, Father, they would not throw their hands up in frustration, but even as she defied the decree and she trusted you and she did her part 
and she took advantage of those around her that you positioned to offer support and she allowed them to pour into her child as well. Your word says casting in 1 Peter 5, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. And so Father, I pray that these mothers will cast their every care upon you. Some of them may have financial needs this morning. Some have great emotional needs. Some of them are frustrated and some of them are, are struggling even as, peer, as a parent. But God, we pray, even this morning, God, that they will cast their care upon you. And they will allow you to come into the situation and guide and strengthen them. We pray, God, that they will turn the Lord over to you. We want to thank you, God, for spirit light support. In 1 Chronicles 12, we read of the children of Issachar, which had me for men of understanding, who understood the times to know what Israel ought to do. Father, this morning we don't have the, 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 the natural sons of Issachar, but we pray that the same spirit that endued them with wisdom and understanding of the season, that that same spirit, Father, will rest mightily upon these mothers this morning. And we pray that same spirit, God, will give them a spirit of understanding to know what they ought to do, to know the things that need to be done in this season. We pray you would raise up women of wisdom, women of encouragement, women of support, women, oh God, who would be generous in their resources to support others. And we pray that at the end of it all, these mothers would fulfill the purpose that you have given to them to see children raised up in the fear of the Lord. We ask these mercies today and your blessing upon all mothers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 On behalf of the local board and the Members of the Shekinah Lesson, I want to extend a wonderful Mother's Day, not just to you mothers here at the sanctuary, but all mothers watching um, our feed on Facebook. And of course, not just the biological mothers, but we know that there are so many of you who mother, who support in so many ways. May God continue to richly bless all of you. Amen. This time we have a presentation from a song from the Sunday School Department. And this time, uh, after that, we have a selection of the women.
You may want to sing a song for us.
for our selection. Nothing impossible. Now this time here, the ladies will get some lovely gifts. Sister Rose and Sister Lisa. This time, I know you may have start living for these gifts. Brother Clark, you want to ask her?
and she is followed by Sister Rita Malin.
are not present, but we wish them a happy Mother's Day. Following them is Sister Sonia Holder.
Jen Lee Thumb Holder. Sister Jenny as we call her.
want to extend a very hearty Mother's Day to Sister Caroline Garner, and we pray that God will bless her richly. At this time, we just want to acknowledge some persons, those persons rather, who were instrumental in making today's Mother's Day a success. So we want to thank Sister Jenny, the Women's Department, the Secretary, Sister Boyce, and her team, the whole entire Women's Department the committee. And they really came together. And the women as a whole, as you saw, they came and they sang a song to us. So I believe that that is things to come. I hope they, don't, they can't just stop there. We're looking for more. So <laughs> I hope they know they have set themselves up now so they can't come down. So we want to thank the lovely women of our church, the committee, the women's committee, the women in the women's department. We also want to extend a thanks to the Sunday school department, the children who in a short space of time were willing to come and to share a point with us. So can we just give a clap for them? And as they said, mothers, we love you. We also want to extend thanks to the men's department who were ushering, they helped with the ushering this morning and sharing and they started the women. So we want to thank you men. I believe the men will be looking for great things come Father's Day, ladies. I think you have your work cut out for you now. <laughs> when you set the bar very high, you know you have to keep going up, 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 up. So then we also want to thank the youth department. The youth would have also helped us started the women today and helping with the setup. I'm happy to see the actual the march. So we want to thank the youth and we also want to thank those who came together to decorate. That would be Sister Deandra and her team, Sister Deandra, Sister Heather, Sister Sandra. I know Sister Shanta also played a role in helping to put the tokens together. So all of these lovely ladies, we want to extend our sincerest thanks to all of you at this time. So once again, as I pass over the mic to my pastor, I want to wish everyone a blessed and happy Mother's Day. God bless you all. Thank you, Sister Squires and Sister Rose. We just have a couple quick things to wrap up and let you get about your celebrations for the day. First off, we want to extend birthday greetings to those who have birthdays, so we ask you more to be able to bring that up. But we also have um, Sister Sherry. Where is Sister Sherry? Oh, yes. It's her anniversary today as well, so we extend the anniversary greetings to her and her husband as well. God grant you many years of joy. I know yesterday was Brother Merlin and his wife, Sister Sheldon, and their anniversary as well. Yesterday. So, congratulations to Brother Merlin. Um, I'm not sure the number. Three. 33. You can get pension. <laughs> 33 years ago. Yeah, I, I, I would never catch you now. So, congrats to Brother Martin. Um, the birthdays are here. We have Sister Nikkei every day, Sister Karen the 9th, Sister Veronica the 13th, and Sister Santa the 27th. So, birthday blessings to those. But there may be some others here because we have quite a large gathering this morning. So are there any other persons who have a birthday in this month as well? Any other persons? Yes. Birthday blessings to you. Birthday blessings to you. Have a gone already or coming? And before. Well, we declare blessings back in the fourth and even today. And to the end of the month. And, and yours is when? When's it coming? Okay. So birthday blessings on you. 
All right, and speaking of Wednesday, Wednesday we are going to be visiting one of our Shannon. So we are going to be going to visit Sister Annie. And we want to leave here by the latest seven fifteen, so we get there to start at seven thirty. Uh, Sister Aline and her departed husband contributed many years to uh, this ministry. And it's good to know that when you have advanced in age that you are remembered. So we want to give him a visit, give her a visit, and show our love and support. We just we don't want to leave you here going with any burdens. We want to be free. We're going to ask the ushers to, ushers to come forward. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, burden is light, so give some hands like it. Uh, if you have corn, we take coins too, right? We haven't, we don't have a debit card yet, so. Oh boy. But we want to give, maybe the musicians can give us a little something if possible. We don't have the, but we don't have something to play. No, but it is, I know. All right, so we want to just give to the body, we're going to bless the offering. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to wrap it all up. Take us some meals and always come up. So make sure that I just shut up and let you go home. We're going to stand. We are going to bless the offering. We're going to stand. We're going to say the prayer, blessing for the offering, and blessing on you as we go. And then we're going to give, greet someone. We're not just run away, but you know, be, a, be a sister in support. Bless someone with a, a greeting before you run off. And thanks for choosing to share this morning. Trust that God will richly bless you. Um, if you have something to give, you can lift your hand. If you have nothing you've given already, you, you desire something to give, just lift your hand before God as a giver. I'm going to ask God to bless, to continue to bless because He's already blessed us. Father, we thank you that we are blessed. We are a blessed people. And so we thank you for the reminder from your word that we are not to quit, but we can look to you to open, open our eyes and see the future, our preferred future. Give us more of the strategies we need and the insight and the support. We pray we'll bless the work of our hands. And as we give and sow into your kingdom, the kingdom of God will advance and see men and women, boys and girls come to recognize the wonderful purpose that you created them for. We are praying, God, even for those who may not have anything to give today, that you will indeed open their understanding and their eyes to see opportunities around them. Even as they petition you, you will open a door that they will be able to get some source of income to support themselves and their families. We pray as we go out this week, Lord, you will be with us. We pray a special grace that whatever the circumstances may be, that we will know that we can look to you that your grace is sufficient. Thank you for those who are visiting this morning. We pray a special blessing upon them, a special grace. And whatever circumstance present this week, may we all advance knowing that God is with us and you will not forsake us. We ask these mercies today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to give your offerings, your gifts, greet your brothers and sisters, your friends, family as you go from this place. Have a wonderful week.